running shoes. I love them, you love them. 2021 presented quite a few great running shoes, but there were quite a few that stood above the rest of them. And today we're gonna go over my top running shoes of 2021, but this award show is gonna be a little bit different than previous years. We're gonna be introducing a few categories for the most innovative, the biggest flop, which shoe was the absolute worst. And we're gonna do this in a fun, entertaining package. So if you're excited for that, hit the like button and let's get into the award show. Before we get into the award show, I have to let you know, no flash photography. Please don't record me with your cell phones and make sure that cell phone's on silent. We don't want any interruptions do the award show. So with that out of the way, let's get into the categories. I think the best place to do this award ceremony is right in the shoe sanctuary where you and I have spoken about so many of these running shoes through the entire year. So let's start off with the first category, best daily trainer. So in 2021, I've tried a bunch of different daily trainers like the Asics Nova Blast, the Hoka Mach 4, the Puma DV8 Nitro. There's a bunch of different daily trainers, but the one that stood out above them all and made me enjoy running each and every time and want to go out and run, which is something that a shoe can do. If you find a shoe that you really enjoy, it can make you want to get out that door. For me, the daily trainer that fit that bill was the Nike ZoomX Invincible. I just did my 200 plus mile review video on this shoe. And like you see, I have a lot of shoes. So if I take a shoe up and beyond that 200 mile point, it's a shoe that I absolutely love. And the Nike ZoomX Invincible is by far my favorite daily trainer. The underfoot sensation is like no other. That ZoomX cushioning, it's so nice. It's so bouncy that it has dampered a little bit as the miles went on. And the upper is just, it needs improvements, but overall, this is my favorite daily trainer of 2021. But of course, there's different stories that we want with daily trainers. Some days we want a daily trainer that just feels a little bit lighter on foot because maybe through our run, we feel like a little bit more energetic and want to pick up the pace. And having a shoe that's a little bit more bulky won't necessarily fit that build for us. The lightweight daily trainer that I would grab for when I go out for those types of runs were, I knew it wasn't going to be a necessarily long run, but I'd want it to maybe pick up the pace a little bit. So want a little bit of a lighter shoe, I'd go for the Hoka Mach 4. This is my favorite lightweight daily trainer of the year. Now, this isn't necessarily a tempo category. There's a specific category for that. I'm speaking specifically about a shoe that is more a daily trainer, but just in a lightweight package that you can pick up the pace, but isn't necessarily the best for picking up the pace. This is where the Hoka Mach 4 fits in the rotation for me, and I've absolutely been loving it. But the real story and why I love this lightweight trainer so much is the lockdown in the upper. The lockdown in the upper is absolutely fantastic, and that's why the Hoka Mach 4 is my lightweight trainer of the year. When I want to go pick up the pace and do my best impressions of Speedy Gonzalez, what's the shoe that I would pick for? What would be my favorite tempo slash speed issue and there has to be only one and this is the same from last year so it's just a second iteration the endorphin speed number two as well as the endorphin speed two run shield version are my favorite tempo slash speed day slash track day shoes there's just something about this shoe folks now the run shield version the reason that i'm not necessarily keeping it on par with the endorphin speed two is because this is a bit more of a warmer upper but in these colder months, it's what's gonna be doing most of my speed work. But the Endorphin Speed 2, I don't think I need to say too much about this shoe. You folks know quite a bit about the Endorphin Speed. Now, there's not many people that don't like it, but of course, each shoe is gonna be completely individual. But for me, the Power Run PB mixed with that nylon plate is super nice underfoot. It feels nice and peppy. It's not as rigid as a carbon fiber plate, which is honestly good for me where my ankles are a little bit less strong and I'm just a non-elite runner. This is a great combination for me. The upper leaves a little bit to be desired, but overall, this is my favorite package for tempo days and picking up the pace if I don't want to wear a carbon fiber plate or racing shoe. And you know, we all have those days where just our legs are heavy and our body just is saying, no, don't go and run, but you know that you should go and run. So you're just going to have an easy day or you're doing a recovery day after a hard workout. And there are shoes that are absolutely fantastic for that job. And for me, there was one shoe that honestly stands like well, well, well above any other shoe in 2021 for doing easy day runs and recovery runs. And that is none other than the New Balance Fresh Foam More version three. This shoe folks is absolutely wonderful for that stuff. It's just like one of my favorite shoes that I've tried this year to be perfectly honest because that Fresh Foam X midsole, it soaks up all the impact, but it also gives a little bit back. It's not like a completely dead block of foam like you get on the Hoka line of shoes with the EVA foam. Like, no, this Fresh Foam X just, it gives something back. It absorbs the impact. It is wearing just a little bit now that I inspect it. So 
that's kind of concerning because I think I only have like 60 miles on this. But the Moore version 3 is probably the best shoe that I've ever tried for easy day and recovery runs. It really just makes your legs feel so protected. It's so comfortable. It has that really wide landing platform. So if you have any instability due to your legs being fatigued or anything like that, it has that little bit of inherent stability that allows you to get out there and keep on putting in those miles on those days where you don't want to put in the miles. The upper on this thing is quite warm, but in these winter months here in Halifax, Nova Scotia, oh baby, you are welcomed. Folks, this is my favorite easy day of 2021 and maybe of all time. But folks, really, what is life if it's not for carbon fiber plated racing shoes that drain our bank accounts and make our spouses and significant others and partners just kind of look at us in disgust when they see that credit bill come and they're just like, you only have two feet. Why do you need 50 million shoes? You know what? I've heard it all. I've heard it all, folks. And for me, the best carbon fiber plated racing shoe that I've tried in 2021 is actually one of my most recent purchases, believe it or not. So I was very hesitant to pick up the shoe because I have the first iteration and I thought, what's the point of picking up the second iteration? I have a lot of other beauties in my collection, but the Black Friday deals hit. And when the Black Friday's deal hit and you see some great deals, well, the credit card just comes out and you type in the number and you kind of just sit back and wallow in your own regret for a few minutes. But then the shoe comes and you try it on and you're absolutely pleasantly surprised. And that's what happened with the Nike Vaporfly Next Percent number two. Now, now this is a midsole that I'm absolutely in love with. I loved it on the version one and I love it even more on the version two. Now, the version one and version two are very similar. Of course, they're essentially the same midsole. So they say, there are people that say the midsole on the version two is slightly firmer and less magical. But for me, I think I can get more out of the midsole because that upper lockdown just is so much better for me. And I can get so much I don't know, just it's a much more enjoyable sensation because that vapor weave upper in the version one just wasn't comfortable. It's it's just really not a comfortable upper. But the upper on the next percent version two with that engineered mesh, absolutely fantastic. So comfortable, excellent lockdown, and the excellent lockdowns allows me to get more out of this midsole, and that's why the Vapor Valley Next Percent number two is my favorite carbon fiber plated racing shoe coming out of 2021. Now we have to take a trip into the realm of love because this next category is it's a category that just makes me feel completely infatuated. It's a, it's a category that I lay awake at night just thinking about how magical this sensation feels underfoot. I wake up in the morning and my day is just starting off a little bit bad and then I think about this midsole and I, I have to sit back and just appreciate that this even exists on this green earth, okay? This is the category for the most innovative and exciting midsole coming out of 2021. And for me, that shoe that has innovated above the rest of them, and when I put it on my foot, it's just a completely unique sensation. It's a sensation that just, oh, it's just so wonderful, so bouncy, so soft, just everything nice, everything nice and spicy, okay? And for me, that shoe is none other than the Adidas Prime X. This thick boy, he's a very thick boy, but he is absolutely fantastic. The, the Light Strike Pro mixed with the carbon fiber rods and all what else is went in this midsole works. It's just so magical underfoot. And a lot of people are saying it's just cheating when you put it on their foot because it has that 50 millimeter stack height and all that deal, yes. But if you put aside your judgment and go try this shoe, it's absolutely fantastic. It is seriously, I don't know. It's kind of like one of those shoes where my legs are really sore. I could put this on and it almost feels like I'm not using any effort to go run. It's honestly, I've been using it for slower runs as well, and it's still fantastic. Of course, it's a little bit unstable. You're essentially on stilts, so going around corners is just like, it's pretty difficult. It's definitely, uh, it's a scary experience, but it's an experience worth having. The Primax, the most innovative midsole in 2021, and honestly, it's it's such a unique ride. If, if it wasn't for like the lack of versatility and the insane price point and all that stuff, it probably would have been my favorite shoe of the year, but it's just not realistic to crown this the best shoe of the year because it's just, it's very specific and very expensive. But of course, with uh, everything happy, there comes things that are sad. And this next category is just, uh, it's one of those things where I sit down at night and I kind of really regret pulling on my credit card and hitting the buy button on this shoe because it's just, this is the biggest flop of 2021. There are times that running shoes just don't work. Like you go out and try so many different running shoes, not all of them are gonna be hits. That's why I buy them, test them, and come and tell you my experiences here on YouTube. And for me, the shoe that really hits the mark this year is none other than the Hoka Bondi X. Now, initially I, I did kind of enjoy this shoe and it's still a fine shoe, but 
That's all it is, is a fine shoe. At coming in at $240 Canadian dollars, this shoe is honestly so overpriced. It's nothing special for the price point. The midsole feels, I don't know, feels smooth, but the upper really misses the mark for me. The tongue is a little bit too short for my liking. It can be good for some people, but overall, the Hoka Bondi X is just, it's a fine shoe. I'll continue using it for certain things, but it's just fine. It's just, it's the biggest flop of the year for me. I was really excited about it, but that $240 price point mixed with like the lack of, uh, the lack of really joy when I'm out there running in this shoe, just, it's not worth it for me. And now we're moving on to a shoe that if you wanna just buy one shoe that you can do your daily runs, you can go and do your easy runs, and you also wanna pick up the pace, Honestly, you can do that in any shoe. Like I used to only run in a single pair of shoes and that was the Brooks Adrenaline line of shoes, which is this ability line of shoes. And I ran like relatively fast, like a 20 minute 5K, like nothing insane, but it is just like a standard stability shoe and it could do the job. But the shoe that I find the most versatile here in 2021, it's a shoe that honestly, I wish I could run in it more, but due to my biomechanics and the way that my foot lands and all that stuff, it just doesn't really work for me. Although, I do think that this is the most versatile shoe of 2021, and that is the Asics Nova Blast Version 2. Now they changed this quite drastically compared to the Version 1, and that those changes allowed me to run in it at all. But once I got up to that 50 mile point, I had to put it on the shelf because I was getting a little bit of foot pain. But through those first 50 miles, I was able to go out for my daily training runs. If I wanted to go easy, I could take this out. But when I was out there, if I wanted to pick up the pace, this midsole and the shape of the shoe just made it so it didn't feel clunky and I could pick up the pace and it felt fantastic. The upper, I think it leaves a little bit to be desired, so I'm hoping that they change that in version three. And I hope that they make the midsole just slightly different. The Ace Nova Blast version two is my most versatile shoe of 2021. And folks, that's a wrap for the 2021 Running Shoe Awards. Thank you so much for this amazing year. This has been an amazing year for the channel. It's been so great connecting with all of you here on YouTube and talking to shoes and running and just life in general. So I'm very much looking forward to what we can do in 2022. Let me know if you have any suggestions or any shoes that you want to see reviewed on the channel, leave them in the comment section down below and I'll try to get to them in 2022. Thank you all so much. I will see you on the next one.